The Island at the Top of the World is a 1974 American fantasy adventure film produced by Walt Disney Productions and starring Donald Sinden and David Hartman. Topic. Plot In London in the year 1907, a British aristocrat, industrialist and millionaire named Sir Anthony Ross Donald Sinden hastily arranges an expedition to the Arctic to search for his lost son Donald. Donald had become lost on a whaling expedition to find the fabled island where whales go to die. Sir Anthony employs the talents of a Scandinavian-American archaeologist Professor John E. Varson David Hartman, and Captain Brew Jacques Marin, a French inventor, aeronaut who pilots the expedition in a French dirigible named the Hyperion, which Captain Brew invented. Upon reaching the Arctic, they meet Umiak Mako Iwamatsu, a comically cowardly, brave Eskimo friend of Donald's, and trick him into helping them join in the search. Ultimately, the expedition becomes temporarily separated from Captain Brew, and discovers an uncharted island named Astrogard, occupied by a lost civilization of Vikings, cut off from the rest of the world for centuries. The Vikings capture Sir Anthony and Ivarsson, but Umiak escapes. Shortly thereafter they find Donald, but are nearly put to death by the fanatical Godi pronounced Go-da, a religious soothsayer, authority figure. The three men Sir Anthony, Evarson and Donald are saved from being burned alive by a brave and beautiful Viking girl named Freya, with whom Donald is deeply and mutually in love. They escape, and are rejoined by Umiak and eventually find the whale's graveyard, but are attacked by killer whales. Here they are saved by the sudden reappearance of Captain Brew, but they are still being pursued by the angry Godi and his rather unwilling warriors. Finally, Godi is killed by the explosion when he shoots a fiery arrow at the Hyperion, but the Vikings will not let the expedition return to their world unless one of them remains behind as a hostage. Ivarsson however, willingly volunteers to stay, because this is a chance to live history. Ivarsson also points out that if someday mankind is ever foolish enough to destroy itself, places like Astrogard may become humanity's final refuge. Sir Anthony, Donald, Freya, Captain Brew and Umiak, are allowed to depart in peace, promising not to tell the outside world about Astrogard. As Ivarsson heads back to Astrogard, he turns to look back just in time to see his four friends move further and further away until they vanish into the Arctic mist. Topic. Cast Donald Sinden, Sir Anthony Ross David Hartman, Professor. Evarson Jacques Marin, Captain Brew Mako, Umiak David Gwillem, Donald Ross Agneta Ekamir, Freya Gunnar Oland, the Godi as Gunnar Oland Las Kolstad, Eric Eric Sildju, Torvald Rolf Soda, the lawspeaker Torsten Wieland, Sven Sver Anka Uzdal, Gunnar as Sver Uzdal Niels Hinrichsen, Sigurd Denny Miller, Town Guard Brendan Dillon, The Factor James Almanzar as French Engineer Ivor Barry as The Butler Lee Paul as Chief of Boat Archers Topic. Production The film's pre-production lasted for several years. The 30th anniversary edition of the film, released by Walt Disney Studios Home Entertainment in 2004, includes a 1968 pre-production trailer as a bonus feature, which includes an interview with producer Winston Hibbler. Topic: <laughs> Writing. The film was based on the novel The Lost Ones, written by Ian Cameron, set in the location of Prince Patrick Island. To tie in with the film, the novel was reissued with the movie's title. There were several changes from the book to the film. The novel is set in 1960, but the film is set in 1907. Instead of Prince Patrick Island, the island in the film is located due north of Ellesmere Island cf. Crocker Land. Several extra characters and the airship Hyperion appear in the film, but not in the novel. Also, the greatest departure in the film is Freya survives to presumably live happily ever after with Donald, whereas in the book she tragically dies, sacrificing herself to save Donald and Sir Anthony. Topic. Release 
The film, which was produced by Walt Disney Pictures, was released together with Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2 in a family-oriented roadshow package. The film received an Academy Award nomination for its art direction, set decoration by Peter Ellenshaw, John B. Mansbridge, Walter H. Tyler, Al Roloffs, and Hal Gaussman. A sequel was planned, entitled The Lost Ones, based more closely on the original novel, but was abandoned when it became apparent that Island at the Top of the World would not be a box office success. Topic. Reception The film presently holds a 43% Rotten rating on Rotten Tomatoes based on seven reviews. Nora Sayer of The New York Times wrote, At moments, the Scandinavian actors seem slightly hampered by having to speak so much Old Norse, but their dragon ships are first rate. And the small children in the audience who broadcasted their responses and opinions throughout enjoyed the movie loudly. Variety stated, "...turning to live action fantasy and stunning use of special effects, Disney comes up with a first-rate entry for the general market in this imaginative Mela filmed partially in the Arctic." Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune gave the film one and a half stars out of four, calling it a "...20,000 leagues under the sea ripoff," with David Hartman contributing, "...one of the year's worst performances by an actor." Kevin Thomas of the Los Angeles Times called it the best live-action feature from Disney in years. A lively, imaginative epic adventure of much charm and wide appeal, it marks a refreshing departure from the studio's all-too-frequent blend of coyness and cut-rate production values and special effects." Gary Arnold of The Washington Post wrote that the film, "...gets by if you don't mind an essentially passive, pokey approach to adventure," and called the accompanying featurette Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2. A livelier and more amusing film. Jeff Brown of the Monthly Film Bulletin wrote that the movie tells its tale with abundant good humor and is a constant visual delight. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Soundtrack. The film's score was created by film composer Maurice Jarre. This was Jarre's first score for a Disney film. The score featured sweeping themes that were tinged with ethnic string and percussion instruments that helped to portray the various cultures represented in the film. Topic: <recording>, Recording. In order to have better balance control over the individual instruments and orchestral sections, the score was recorded on multiple reels of simultaneously recorded 35 mm magnetic film. Since multiple reels of three-track magnetic film were synchronized over several recording sessions in order to have all the tracks in the recording, it was possible to have several different versions of the score from which to choose. In addition, many of the exotic percussion and other instrumentation were overdubbed later, after the initial orchestral sessions were completed. The score was then mixed down to mono along with the final dialogue, sound effects and score for insertion into the film. In 1974, to accompany the film release, Disney released a story record album containing audio clips from the film, an 11-page illustrated booklet. The story was narrated by baritone voice actor Thurl Ravenscroft. Jarre's score for the film was re-recorded on solo organ for the storybook record release and does not contain the orchestral recording of the score that was used in the film. 1974, Disneyland Records, catalog number 3814 mono, LP format. During the 1970s, portions of the orchestral score to Island at the Top of the World were used in Disneyland's Adventureland. Jarre's music was mixed with various other music cues from other Disney films and attractions to create a continuous loop of ambient adventure music. The music collage was played in ride cues, restaurants and shopping areas inside the park. In 1994, the laser video disc release of the film, included the monaural score isolated on a separate audio track. In 2010, the main title music from the film was presented on a 4-CD compilation of Maurice Jarre film music entitled Le Cinéma de Maurice Jarre, released in France. The track was in mono and presumably sourced from the original session mixdown. In March, 2012, Intrada record label, released the complete score to the film on compact disc Intrada Special Collection, Volume 193. For the release, engineers were given access to the Disney vaults containing the complete original recording elements, which were recorded onto multiple reels of 35mm magnetic film. 
Intrada synchronized the recording elements and remixed the entire film score, resulting in a restored version heard in stereo for the very first time. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Cultural references. Topic: <laughs> 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 Disneyland Anaheim, CA. A new land, Discovery Bay, was planned but never built in the area that will be occupied by Star Wars Land, which would have contained a reproduction of the Hyperion airship protruding from a recreation of Captain Brio's hangar. Sections of the design for this land was used in Disneyland Resort Paris Discoveryland area. <laughs> <laughs> Disneyland Paris The Hyperion airship was recreated at Disneyland Resort Paris in the Discoveryland area of the park, and was at its time in 1992 considered as the largest prop ever at any Disney theme park. Other Hyperion is a brand used by Disney for publishing endeavors, from the early 1990s. Disney had a studio on Hyperion Avenue in Los Angeles early in their history. See also List of American films of 1974 The Sannikoff Land film.